Hello everyone. I'm Andy. I'm English. So today I will speak with you. I will speak perfect English. Okay. Okay. But you seem scared. So that was my um, original voice speaking English. So I want to share with you my story. The quest to become a native speaker. The English mania in Vietnam has become quite a phenomenon. If you are uh, fluent in English, you are granted a plethora of opportunities. You can become a television host, you can become a teacher, you can become an interpreter, you can become uh, a goodwill ambassador, you can become a producer, you can become a voice announcer. So I have tried all of those. My life is quite colorful, thanks to English, actually. Can I have a show of hands? How many of you are dreaming to speak English fluently? Wow, wow, okay, almost all of you, okay. And how many of you are here over the age of 18? Over the age of 18? Okay, so almost everyone. Who are under 17? No one. Okay, one. Oh, you're very young. Okay, very young lady. So I have bad news for all of you. Sad news, except for her. According to this uh, research, you are no longer able to learn English. <laughs> because the ability to learn a new language, when you reach the age of 17, you say happy birthday, but actually say hello, goodbye to your ability to learn a new language. But to me, to, to someone who is still dreaming like me, I ask myself, really, is it the reality? Hmm, interesting graph, but this says low. It does not say zero, okay? It does not say zero, it says low. So maybe here it would be like 1% of the population. So it's not an impossibility. It's not an impossibility, it's just that not many people are getting it. So, for someone who is optimistic, I would think, wow, this is wow, an opportunity. It's, not, it's like a, a glass half full. Okay? This is an opportunity. So, if I can get into that 1% uh, of the population, I can become rich, famous. Okay? I'm not thinking about the 99% who can't do it. I'm thinking about getting into the 1%. I'm very proud to be uh, here uh, on, on the awake section of the day, but actually, I think dreaming is very important too. So not only being awake, but also the dreaming part. I think they are both part of the same cyclical process. So I'm gonna give you three tips today. And tip number one, anyone can do it. Okay, a lot of my students say that, oh, I'm not smart enough. I'm not, uh, uh, I don't have big ears. I, uh, I cannot hear anything. I don't remember anything. I, then I said, look at my ear. <laughs> I have the smallest ears. So if I can uh, listen to English, so why can't you, okay? So I'm gonna prove it live on stage. So please follow me by watching this small clip. Tell me what is he saying or singing? So what was he seeing? Yes. Jingle bells. All of you know that. So what about this one? Okay, so what was he seeing? Well, what was he saying? Jingle bell again? No, no, right? Okay, another chance, okay? Another one. Okay, Okay. So, it's quite difficult for the second and third part, right? Yeah, the third part was uh, London Bridge was falling down, right? But, I'm asking a question. Why is it so easy for clip number one, but quite so difficult for clip number two and three? Why is it? The sound quality across the three cases are the same, right? We all hear, wah, wah, wah. but 
Why could you hear jingle bells in the first clip, but not the second or the third clip? Because you are not familiar with it. It's not because you're stupid or because you can't hear the sound, right? Everyone hears, right? But you uh, recognize uh, jingle bells, but you cannot recognize the second or third song, right? Because you are not familiar with it. So learning language to me has always been getting familiar with it. It's not about your IQ, okay? I have a simple thing, thinking. If 100% of Vietnamese can speak Vietnamese, and 100% English people can speak English, then speaking a language is not, and it's not something like so difficult, right? That's what I think, okay? It's not so difficult. All right. So the same thing happens to reading. So we have been experienced in listening, okay? The same thing happens to uh, reading. Tell me, what is written here? Wow, jumping to conclusions. Well, all of you can answer that. But sorry, no. <laughs> it's not, okay? So why did you jump to your own conclusion? To the wrong conclusion? Because you are not familiar with this one, right? You are familiar with this one, okay? You are fami more familiar with the pattern, with the word combinations of this one. You've never seen this one, right? So it's always about familiarity, okay? And you never need to know the full thing, okay? You don't need to see the full picture. You only need to see a part of it. And because it's familiar to you, it will, uh, your brain will do the rest, okay? So get more exposure. Tip number two, we are learning the wrong way. The typical adult learner will look at the other adult learner in the native speaker range. And they will say, wow, so uh, I have a friend who, uh, who is a native speaker. He, uh, he reads textbooks, he watches movies. So I should do the same to be the same thing. But it's not, it's the result. It's not, uh, it's not how they get there, okay? You have to follow the original way. So many years ago, they started learning English by watching cartoons like Donald Duck. Right. It's... So you cannot copy this way, but you have to follow the path, the same path as a native speaker is following. Okay. Tip number three, look at the maps. This is something everyone uh, neglects. We are familiar with the textbook. We are familiar with using uh, audios to learn uh, English, but you forget to look at the maps of the native speakers. So let, uh, let me explain why. So look at her and tell me what is she saying. Okay. Next she's saying ba ba ba. Okay. What about this one? Ah, ba ba ba. Really? No, no, no. So once again. A lot of you are confused, okay? A lot of you are confused. That's because it was the same audio, but I <laughs> overlaid it over um, three different videos. So this is called the McGurk effect. So your brain will produce the sound in your head, not only by using the input from your ears, but also the input from your eyes. Okay. So, if you look at the left side, when I play this clip, you will hear a different sound. But if, when you switch to the other side, you will hear a different sound. Okay, so let's try it. A little bit left, a little bit left. You can see the McGurk effect. So that's why looking at the mouth of a native speaker is so important, because it is part of the language formulation process, okay? If you forget looking at the mouth, then you will not be able to copy the sounds 100% perfectly. Your brain consciously uses the inputs from the eyes as well. Yara, the Korean band, okay? 
they uh, pronounce their hit single, Lolly Polly. Okay? Not Rolly Polly, but Lolly Polly. Because East Asians cannot pronounce R and R. They cannot differentiate it most of the time. Okay? It does not only happen with uh, East Asians or Koreans, though. It happens to Vietnamese as well. We have imported the word coupe or puppet from France, and we have uh, turned it into boupe, which is a completely different sound. Okay? And another case, we have changed, we have modified savon into, uh, depending on the north or the south of Vietnam, savon or savon. So there are sounds that do not exist in our language or in other languages, okay? That you have to be aware of, okay? There are sounds that do not exist in some languages, including our own, um, that we have to be um, paying attention to. And there are, there are sound combinations as well that do not seem natural to the speaker, so, that, so they modify it. And we have to be aware of it to, to not modify it. So fast forward 10 years into my training to become a native speaker. Okay. Are you ready for the test to see whether or not you have become a native speaker? What connects these three words? Sky, boat, and I. Light, light. Oh, okay. So you have all become like native speakers. Congratulations. <laughs> the answer is light. What connects these three words? If you are a native speaker, you will be able to answer this. What connects it? Meets with cottage, Swiss, and cake. The answer is cheese. Okay. So even though we know each and every word, cottage, Swiss, cake, cheese, we are not in the minds of the native speakers because these things are um, related to their everyday use. We are not exposed to the same materials, and we don't like to use the same thing. So uh, they are not off the top of our heads, they're not at the tip of our tongue to, um, to come up with an answer so quickly. Okay. Part two, awake. Actually, part two is more scary than part one, dreaming. Right? So I have been trying to uh, practice a lot. I have created my own robot to help me with my speaking. Yes. For example. I'm listening, Andy. How can I help you? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? <laughs> of course, it's you, Andy. <laughs> it's you, Andy. So it knows how to flatter, okay? Ah, okay, so I'm gonna ask him one more question. Hello. I'm listening, Andy. Have I become a native speaker? No, sorry, I am afraid not. No, I have not been a native speaker after 10 years. Oh, I'm so sad. So when I'm awake, I cannot become a native speaker. But that's not too bad. Because becoming a native speaker is not the future. When I came to study abroad in Australia, this is my class in Australia. How many native speakers do you think there are? Almost none of us are native speakers. Oh. So that is the future of the world. So currently, for every native speaker, there are five non-native speakers speaking English. So you are more likely to talk with non-natives than natives. The future of the world is that non-natives will dominate. And it is your job to be able to speak to them, okay? My quest has been not to become a native speaker, but becoming something else. I am now having the opportunity to explore, to explore who I can be. Not becoming them, but to explore who am I underneath. So I have tried a lot of things. Now I think embodying a character is more important because you need to tell the story and you need to feel the same thing. So for example, I'm practicing different accents. Now, 
I'm becoming an American gangster, see? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm speaking an American uh, gangster accent, or well, sometimes I'm speaking like uh, a little bit of French and I'm feeling like a little bit of bread, okay? Or well, sometimes I need a little, little bit of pizza, okay? <laughs> sometimes I can be a princess, or sometimes I can be Megatron, or Optimus Prime. And that has been my realization. It is not about becoming uh, native speakers. It is about uncovering their different characteristics or your different personalities. So if you want to learn English, you can come to see me. But if you, <laughs> but if you want to uh, discover more about life, you will uh, get to see more, much more from me. Thank you.